Ah, bad headline. My bad, I'm sorry. But I do have something mind-blowing for word nerds today. Meet a seven. Yes, I used a misleading headline yesterday, and I'm here today to apologize. But before we get started, Lumpy Lumpson asked, what does Vita stand for? Short history goes back to March 2009. Author Maureen Johnson undertakes to blog every day in April. Blog with a B. She's a writer. She names the month Vita. Blog every day April. She sets up rules, invites folks to join her, sets up a ning so people can share what they're writing. I'll link to her original post about it if you're interested. Some YouTubers hear about the idea and switch it to Vida, vlog every day, April. V, vlog with a V, video. It's a five-year-old tradition. I tried Vida a couple of times in my history here. I never got all 30 done, never even got close. So I'm trying again this year, except I missed April altogether. I did one video this April, one. The media identity tag originated by Anthony D'Angelo. Well, April's got an R in it. Too busy eating oysters, I guess. Not true. I never eat them. August does not have an R in it, so oysters aren't even an option. August starts with an A, so why not do a summer Vita? Who sets these rules anyway? Maureen? Ah, she won't mind. I'll give her books a plug in the extras. So that's the short history. There's a long history, too. There are the Vedas, the oldest Sanskrit Hindu scriptures. The word Veda comes from a proto-Indo-European root, meaning to know or to see. It happens to be related to the English word wit. And are you ready for this? The Latin word video. I see. See, they get you coming or going. Well, I'm already two days behind. I don't think I'm going to last out the month. Side note, YouTube's algorithms favor people who post frequently. They reward watch time, so I'm working very hard to keep up the frequency, quality, and running time. Those are the external rewards, but there are built-in rewards. I think the discipline is helping me make better vlogs. I think I'm getting better, but that's for you to judge. It's running me ragged, though. Sometimes it leads to mistakes like dodgy focus two days ago and a bad headline yesterday. Oh, did you think I forgot about the headlines? But there's nothing neurotic about feeling uneasy if you lose your phone, considering all the personal data on it and the functionality and the trouble and expense of replacing it. That doesn't come close to being a disorder, a mental disorder. On the contrary, I think it would be a disorder not to feel bad about losing your phone. The disorder is suffered by people who actually still have their phones but get utsy because they can't use them right now in this instant. Maybe they left them at home or in the car or at the office or in their coat pocket or the battery is running out or there's no coverage or they're at an event where someone is telling them to turn off your cell phone. That's where there's an issue. That's where there's a disorder. So I renamed yesterday's video, changed the thumbnail. I'm apologizing to you all for misleading you. I'm also secretly celebrating because my mistake got me to do another day in Vader with without a lot of effort. <laughs> As Bug says, ain't I a stinker? Until next time, I'm Mikola. <laughs> DVD extras. Until this year, I was one of the very few people, maybe the only person, with a perfect attendance record at the California Vloggers event known as VidCon, the London Vloggers event known as Summer in the City, and the Seattle event known as Vlogger Fair, of which there's only been one so far. Well, I broke that streak this year. My friends in the UK community and their friends are celebrating this weekend. Sorry I'm not there. I hope the event exceeds all your highest expectations. But I still have my vlogger fair streak to defend, and I will be there next weekend. Hope to see you. If you are in, near, or can get to Seattle, Tyler Oakley will be there, Adorian Deck, my new buddy Barnacles Nerdgasm, lots of folks. Matthew Schuler will be there. Careful where you park, Matt. Details and a link in the description. Maureen Johnson, who started Vida and therefore Vida, is what they call a YA author, young adult. I'm an old adult. Well, old. Adult is debatable. Maureen's currently doing a series of novels about an American girl from Louisiana going to school in London, getting involved in ghostly mysteries. It's got that fish-out-of-water thing, an American in London coping with cultural differences and ghosts and murders and danger and humor. The first involves a series of murders that echo the spree of Jack the Ripper. Her publisher sent me a copy. I bought the second installment on my own for Kindle, and the third in the series is coming out early next year. There's also a short story in the series. And while you contemplate the Venn diagram of fans of Mikola and readers of Maureen Johnson, I'm heading to the bubble. Here's yesterday's video with the new thumbnail. Here's someone talking to you not about Vida, but Veda. And I don't mean Luke's father. I mean Vedic science. Here is my entire output from April 2014. Voda. Vlog one day in April. And here, though most of the world seems resolutely uninterested in it, is my series about movies on movies. I can outlast you, Internet, and I'll keep making them. Bye now.